Welcome to the shooting show. This week we're in the Derbyshire Dales with Pete Law and Liam Marsh chasing foxes. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. Pete, George and Liam head out with cameraman in tow for a night's lamping, the conditions look favourable. A couple of rear put in the first appearance. One to the right. One to the right. The lamping team get to the first stand to call from. A couple of hairs bound in the beam as the driver and lampman refuel. You enjoying that, fellas? Yeah, we're just uh, we're just rattling it. Just to see if dri drivers, it, drivers yeah. in a lunch break. Is that is that why you didn't want to shoot first, Mr. Law? Yeah. <laughs> Need to feed. <laughs> yeah, drivers on a lunch break. Yeah, wait a minute. Eventually, moving on, steadily working the ground. Waiting for a classic eye shine of a fox. The ground is split by a rail line. As Pete phones in to check for a safe crossing, Liam scans forward for foxes. The guys hatch a plan to wake Pete up. <laughs> Oh, and a rock. Yeah. First promising eye shine turns out to be Sylvester, the puddy cat. The cat. Yep. Yeah. It's a white cat. <laughs> And then a laid up fox bolts from a hedge showing no intention of stopping. You know where to go. I can't give a shot on it, George. Swaps it. Liam now hands the rifle over to Pete as the next patch is lamped. Pete's look is in as a sticky fox shows but won't come any closer. A precision shot will be needed. Pete retrieves his prize as the shot found its mark. Nice mature dog. Not a bad size thing actually. A good healthy deer population continue to share and despite their best efforts only one fox is bagged. The decision is made to have a return match on Pete's ground the following night. Ivan steps in as Lampman replacing George as Pete takes to the driver's seat. Plenty of badgers mooch in the fields. Hopefully some foxes will put in an appearance. Yeah, fair lot. Oh, here it comes. The first fox shows, but it's a good way out. It's a long shot, but Liam concentrates as there is no way the gap can be easily closed. Yeah. I think he's down. An old stager here. A real tricky customer, satisfyingly bagged. Straight 
strong moonlight is not conducive to effective lamping. Systematic lamping, Pete and Ivan know the ground very well and continue in an effort to put Liam onto another fox. Both Lampman and Shooter are familiar with the ground and satisfied of a solid backstop, so the shot is taken. The third and final fox is checked over. Homeward bound after a cold and tricky couple of nights lamping, a warming pot of Yorkshire tea beckons as the guys chew over the events. Thanks Liam for last night. No problem mate. Very invited to your spot. It was entertaining. Mm -hmm. It's a shame we didn't get as many as what we thought, yeah. you know, the fresh cut crops and everything else, but it certainly mm -hmm. put the land over through its paces with a new shooting hatch and the roof mount. Yeah. But, um, a lot of stuff, the deer was nice to see especially, you got a lovely, lovely head of deer on there. Yeah, I'm lucky uh, on that. Uh, oh, you're very lucky, yeah, really, really lucky. The uh, fox was a bit elusive, the ones that we saw did quite like to sit, Yeah. but right. the one that I was lucky to get. That sat and sat and sat until we could get a safe shot and uh, we nailed that one. It were unusual, yeah. Well, I was yeah, quite, quite pleased with that shot to be honest. It were a very good shot. Yeah, it was really, really nice to do it to be fair. Um, just a shame nothing else showed late night. We're trying to finish 4.30. Four, four uh, it was, yeah. Yeah, we got home about 6 in the morning so uh, it was a pretty long night. Yeah, that's the thing. Like and here we are now, <laughs> another day, finished a cup of tea. Yep. And uh, what time is it now? Uh, Three o'clock. So it's another late night, yeah. which you're used to, Ivan, because you've been out regular with us. But how do you like it down to Arbyshire Foxing? I love it. It's nice yeah, that's a nice, nice land. Uh, not, not so flat land. Yeah, the mills and no, banks no. are really nice. It's nice to have. Some. Yeah, not as much land as what you've covered, but different terrain. It's it totally different way of lamping. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Enjoyable. But you shot really well. Cheers. Really, really well indeed. Um, the long shot you did. Excellent. That was a difficult oh. shot, man. Yeah. Really good, and uh, certainly did did the job. That Browning rifle, I'm really impressed with it, actually. Yeah, and Scott. It's a long time since I've player. used a factory rifle, but um, brilliant, absolutely superb. Handles well, cycles well, triggers really crisp, say straight out of the box. And um, well, Sarsky scope, I use one anyway, so I'm used to that Z6i. Um, but again, clarity, amazing. There's nothing, not a lot more you can say about it. But the bullets did the job. I was quite impressed yeah. with the gecko. They yeah, uh, very, very accurate. Stopped round. everything in its tracks and put it exactly where you put the crosshair. Mm. It was pretty good indeed. Very, very pleased. It was nice on the long shot seeing that. Yeah, when you see it actually go down. Actually, yeah, it was know, really nice. Coming through the beam. Yeah, it was and good. And getting across there. Yeah, it was really nice to see that. Cattle in the field. Yeah. And Liam, well, that's, Liam, a Liam, that's a problem. <laughs> Liam, bless his cotton socks, was a bit, a bit frightened of the cattle. <laughs> Giving him a little on the time you'd see me. Giving him a bit of a cuddle and, and, oh. and piggybacked him in, and we, and we were all right in the end. Yeah, 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 the farmer like, does get a bit stressed sometimes when we're yeah. around this time of year, but uh, I've done that land for nearly 20 years. Yeah. So uh, he knows he's safe. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing, but it's been enjoyable two nights. It's been a very tiring couple of nights. Yeah. You know, it's uh I haven't had a late nights like this for a long time. No. But uh, it's been good. It's been really good, I enjoyed it a lot. Pete and Liam there proving to be an effective team. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. The pheasant season is here, and if you want to shout about the benefits of pheasant shooting, it's easier than ever. Busk's new infographic puts all the relevant information in one place. For example, did you know that more than 280,000 people work on shoots every year? Or that shoots manage half a million hectares of woodland? You can download all the info from the Busk website. Chris Packham's at it again, this time by attacking legitimate woodcock shooting. He said 17% of woodcock shot are native to the UK. Research by the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust shows resident woodcock make up just 2% of the UK bag. 
Peckham has been accused of adopting an extremist agenda once again and blatantly ignoring wider issues that should be informing the debate. Read all about game shooting in iShoot magazine every month. It looks like wild fouling will continue on Findhorn Bay. There had been a war between shooters and antis over a petition that called for a ban on fouling on the bay, and the results of an arbitration between the two parties were heavily criticised. Now, Moray Council has intervened and referred the matter back to the local Nature Reserve Management Committee, of which Basque is a member. For now, shooting continues unaffected. Basque is taking its show on the road, bringing its rural receptions to the major party conferences and telling MPs all about the benefits of shooting. First, at the Lib Dem conference in Brighton, Basque and the Angling Trust hosted MPs. Alistair Carmichael described Basque's work as very important. Then, Basque chairman Peter Glenzer addressed Labour at their conference in Liverpool. He explained the benefits of grouse shooting and moorland management to MPs. Basque is at the Conservative Party conference right now. And finally, efforts to reintroduce an ivory trade have been defeated for good. South Africa, Namibia and Zimbabwe tabled a motion in front of CITES to establish a decision-making process for when a trade in ivory might be permitted. But in the face of fierce opposition, CITES opted not to continue with the process. This means a regulated ivory trade can now be permanently off the table. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show. <laughs>